Hi, this is another runaway video, and as you see, this screen has nothing on it. Yeah, I've, I've run into an issue with my camera. Uh, my camera is a piece of crap. If I could show you it right now, you'd see that it's very old. Um, yeah, we just don't have the money to afford a good camera. If you guys want me to start a Kickstarter, please say so in the comments below. But, um, yeah, the camera's not working right now, so for right now I'm using my... Um, the thing I used to record my video games, but I have nothing on the game screen, and I'm just going to be reading the book. Sorry. I'm sure that nobody watches this series anyway, which is a shame, because I really want to get the word out about this author, Wendell and Von Drainen. It's kind of the whole point of the series. Um, but, you know, I wasn't expecting many views from it anyway. As long as a few people know about the author, I'll be happy. And even if they don't read the book, I just hope that they spread the word. Anyway, continuing from where we left off. Also, that's the reason I haven't been getting Runaway videos out recently. I've missed a couple, and I'll be catching them up like I used to back when I started the series, and I was way behind. Every day at about 11.30, there's a parade of scraggly people that goes down the street along the ocean. Some of them wear backpacks, some of them push shopping carts, some of them walk along with nothing at all. There's one guy in a motorized wheelchair. He wears a black hat and has a little red pennant on his wheelchair that flaps in the air behind him. There are a couple of men in camouflage shirts and others with guitars slung across their backs. It's a weird sight, like some sort of defeated, retreating army. The first time I saw them, I thought, man, I'm glad I'm not hanging around them, because I was sure they were a big group of homeless people being run out of town. But the next day I saw them again and I thought, what the heck? Then I realized that there was only one thing that would motivate an army of homeless to march through the streets together. Free food! So I joined the parade from a respectable distance and discovered that this town is a rescue wagon. The woman who runs the rescue wagon is very nice, in a gruff kind of way. She drives into the parking lot of a big church, opens up the side of the truck, and gives a cellophane sandwich to anyone who wants one. No questions, no sermons, just food. I met this girl at the rescue wagon yesterday. She, she's a year older than I am, and she told me her name is Venus. Like, I believe that. So I told her my name was Gigi and lied to her about everything else, too. I said that I was from Denver and that my parents were a couple of mean drunks, so I was on my way to Oregon to live with my aunt. Oregon's awful, she told me. It rains all the time, and there are no movie stars there like there are around here. Movie stars? I laughed. Have you ever actually seen any? Her eyes got huge. All the time! She, then she rattled off a list of movie stars that she'd seen and said that one of them had even said hello to her. I could have touched him, he was that close. She told me some more stuff about movie stars, and yeah, I thought she was a big fat liar. Not like Camille, who knows what she's done, who knows what she's doing and does it to hurt other people. Like kids I've met at shelters. They tell made up stories so much that they actually begin to believe them. I guess it's one of those, what do they call them, defense mechanisms? A way to keep reality from creeping in too close. Then she, asked you, then she asked me, where are you staying? I shrugged. You're not living on the streets, are you? She looked over both shoulders. Some of these people are truly deranged. I shrugged again, like, no biggie. Maybe you should stay at the manor with, it, with us, she whispered. It's exclusive, but I'll ask my mom. See, she expects me to believe that she's living in an exclusive manor. Um, next, she'll be talking about her servants. But I figured hearing about her fantasy life was better than talking to the wall, so I said, A manor, huh? What's that like? It's awesome, she said. And I was thinking, yeah, yeah, right. Only then, she said, It's right in the ocean, and you can watch the sunrise and the sunset. Have you even seen dolphins? My head started ping-ponging between, Really? And, oh, right. It couldn't be true, but... I still wanted to believe her. Dolphins? I asked. They swim in little herds, she told me. I wish I could swim. Did you ever see that movie? What movie? The one about the boy who lives on a desert island and becomes friends with blue dolphins? I shook my head. They save him. They swim him back to his parents. Really? Oh, yeah, she said, and then told me the whole plot from beginning to end. When she finally stopped talking, I must have been looking at her a little strangely because she said, What's the matter? What are you thinking? Nothing, I told her, but I was thinking something, and I was thinking that I'd actually found another sea gypsy, even if she didn't know how to swim. I'm going to wrap this up quick because Venus wants me to play cards with her. Basically, her mother said I could come home with them, and it turns out that the manor is a big house that's been um, condemned because of an earthquake. There are signs all over the place that warn you you'll die if you go inside, but dozens of street people have moved in, and the house sure doesn't feel like it's going to fall down the cliff or anything. I've staked, I've staked out my own little place on the floor of an upstairs room with some extra blankets that Venus gave me. 
it's always rough when I just start reading. I read these, like, um, multiple chapters at a time, multiple videos at a time, I mean. And the first ones that I record in a, seg in a segment, I always mess up a lot. But I get into the habit of reading again, out reading out loud again after a while. So sorry for this one. Um, I've staked out my own little place on the floor of an upstairs room with some extra blankets that Venus gave me. I'm right next to her, and her mother's off a little to the side. Everyone in this house sized me up quick, said, Come on in, and now they all call me Gigi. One of them even gave me a tube of lotion when she saw how bad my sunburn was. So I'm feeling very strange. I'm pretending to be someone else, but that someone else almost feels like she belongs.